Okay, so today we're going to deal with solving word problems using equations. So what's going to happen is we're going to get a statement that describes a situation in words. And what we're going to have to do is create an equation that represents that sentence in order to find out what a number is. So for this first one, it says the sum of twice a number and 21 is 83. So we're going to take this piece by piece in order to set up an equation. So the sum means we're going to be adding two things together. So what we're going to be adding is twice a number, oops, and the number 21. So when it says twice a number, it's hinting at a certain operation. And it, it's hinting at multiplication. So twice a number would mean two times a number and we're going to use n and you always have to write what your variable represents. So n is a number. So twice a number, 2n, and it says here the sum. So sum means addition. So we're going to be adding 2n plus 21 and it says is 83. Well in math is means equals. So when we say that it is 23, it means that this equation equals 83. So now we're going to solve it like any normal equation. And what most people find is that setting up the equation is the hardest part because once you go, once you do that, you can solve it like you would solve any other equation. So we're going to subtract 21 from both sides. You get 2n is equal to 62. Divide by 2, and n is equal to 31. Now the tricky thing about word problems is you always have to make sure you solve the equation correctly and answer the problem. So this one just tells us to find the number but sometimes the word problem is going to ask us for something different and we have to make sure we're answering the problem completely. So we're going to do a couple more examples. Six times a number increased by three is 27. Find the number. So six times a number, so n is going to be our number again n is a number, so 6 times a number, 6n, increased by 3. Now increased is another word used for addition. So if we increase this by 3, we're going to add 3 to this. And once again we have is, which means equals, so equals 27. I'm going to subtract 3 over, and we get 6n equals 24. Divide by 6, n equals 4. And once again, it says find the number, so this is our final answer. We can stop there. So we have one more problem we're going to do. Four-fifths of the class went to the zoo. If 64 kids went to the zoo, how many kids are in the class? So this one's a little more complicated and we're, what we're gonna use is we're gonna use C to represent the class. So we're gonna take, so since four-fifths of the class of always is gonna signify multiplication because you're saying we have this many 
of something else. So in order to find out how much we have, we're going to take the fraction times the number. So we have four-fifths of the class, which we're going to write as C, went to the zoo. And we know that four-fifths of the class is 64. Because it says 64 kids went to the zoo. So now we're going to multiply both sides by 5 fourths, and this is going to get a C. We can reduce by fours. This becomes 1. This becomes this becomes 16, and 16 times 5 is equal to 80. So if you set it up this way, and make sure you put units, and that means 80 kids. So if you set it up this way, you're going to get your final answer. And since they want to know how many kids went to the cl are in the class, and this tells us how big our class is, that's how we know we completely answered the problem. But I'm going to show you another way to set it up. And if you set it up this way, you have to do an extra step to make sure you answer the problem completely. So you remember when a while ago we talked about proportions? Well, if we were to write this as a propor proportion, it would be four-fifths is equal, and since this is the smaller number and this is the total, we're going to put 64 over x. And if we cross multiply, we're going to get 4x is equal to 64 times 5. And x is going to give you, if you plug that into a calculator, x will also give you 80. So see how we, t we had to do this extra step right here? But you always want to make sure you answer the qu question completely using the correct units. So that's all we're going to do with word problems today. But make sure you come back and watch your next video where we're going to talk about inequalities.